My name is Ahmad Shahidu, I'm from Azerbaijan Institute and Human Rights. I have some questions to you about the station of human rights in Azerbaijan. Briefly, how do you see uh, the real station of human rights? Uh, I mean, fundamental rights, media freedom, and other rights in Azerbaijan. Well, I'm gravely concerned by the situation. I think it's deteriorated in uh, recent months, starting with the, the major crackdown in the summer, uh, targeting human rights defenders, bloggers, uh, independent journalists, uh, and this then affects not only freedom of expression and media freedoms, but it suggests that there's a very serious problem in the judiciary, that the judiciary is not acting independently and impartially. Um, I've been raising now for some time, for two years, concerns about restrictive NGO legislation, which makes it very difficult to do human rights work legally. Uh, <clears throat> so I have a whole array, array of concerns uh, about the situation in Azerbaijan. I, I would like to see the Azerbaijani authorities reverse course, release all the people who are, who are in prison should not be there, uh, and carry out the reforms that I've been recommending. I remember your last visit in October to Azerbaijan, and I also showed your Facebook status about your uh, meeting with Rasul Jabbar and other uh, activists. Uh, as you know, you, uh, you mentioned in your speech today's uh, ceremony about your friends in Azerbaijan, they are in prison. But uh, do you know that you are not accepted uh, as friends of all NGOs, all the journalists in, Azer in Azerbaijan? Because some of uh, journalists, uh, they think that uh, you just uh, keep warm relations with part activists, part journalists. <coughs> what is the reason? Well, I would be happy to engage with, with all segments of the journalistic community. We did this uh, during the IGF forum uh, almost three years ago, together with Dunja Mijatovic and Nelly Cruz, who was the EU commissioner. We had uh, a very lively exchange with a full spectrum of journalists in Azerbaijan, those who are pro-government, anti-government, neutral, uh, whatever. And I, I'd be happy to do that again. My last trip focused on the people in detention because these are people who work closely with my office and I wanted to show solidarity with them and raise their cases with the authorities and gather more information about their cases. Uh, but this, is no means, this by no means means that I do not have any interest in meeting with others. Uh, I do, but I could not meet with everybody in a short visit to those of Also, uh, as a human rights defender, I highly appreciate your activity about human rights in Azerbaijan. Uh, also, you know, uh, unfortunately, we had some problems with human rights, but it's not only concerned that journalists, NGO activists, and other uh, persons, we have uh, another group of human rights violations. I mean, for example, uh, Azerbaijan hostings. Draw a human rights commissioner, and I think you have enough information about uh, two Azerbaijan citizens, Zulgan uh, Askarov and Shahbaz Kuliyev. They were kept in hostage in Nagorno Karabakh in Azerbaijan. And have you any activity, have you any statement about this uh, Azeri hostage? Well, I've, I've been regularly approached by both sides, by the Armenian and Azerbaijani sides, to engage on. Uh, on individual cases where people have crossed the border or been captured or have been killed and their remains have not been returned. And I've said the same thing to both sides. I've said, listen, uh, you should work with the International Committee of the Red Cross, which is the, the relevant organization here, in doing prisoner exchanges, in, doing, in, in uh, returning bodies uh, of people who have been killed. Uh, there's a case law in the European Court of Human Rights that suggests that if you do not give back the remains, this could be considered uh, a violation of, of, of Article 3 of the Convention and constitutes cruel and unusual punishment. Um, and uh, I urge them not to politicize, both sides, not to politicize these things and to, to exchange both hostages and, and bodies and, and to use the good offices of, of, of the Red Cross to do so. Also, um, in Azerbaijan, we uh, held first European Games uh, next month. Uh, what do you see? Uh, what do you uh, wait from Azerbaijan? Uh, what should be happen uh, during these European Games? I mean, on the field of human rights. Well, I think the best gift uh, to European sports would be if all of the activists who are uh, human rights defenders journalists, bloggers who are in jail because of expressing critical views were released uh, to commemorate the games. Uh, and if the NGO legislation were liberalized, and if uh, the media legislation were, were liberalized, uh, to me that would be the biggest gift to sports 
but I hope that these, this event will, will draw attention to the human rights record, and I hope that people going to Azerbaijan uh, will engage with their Azerbaijani hosts to ask them about the situation, what they think, uh, why are these people in jail, uh, what can be done to help them. Uh, I hope that people will be aware of the situation uh, in the country that they're going to. Also, we have uh, next time an election, first of November. Uh, how do you see the uh, pre-election period in Azerbaijan? And have you observed the previous election in Azerbaijan? Would you uh, do wait any uh, positive change uh, in the next parliament? I'm not in the business of observing elections. Uh, we have the Parliamentary Assembly, which observes elections as well as OSC, the OSC. Uh, but it's clear that if you have problems with freedom of the media, it's very difficult to have free and fair elections if people are not, if you do not have a diversity of media and people are uh, censoring themselves. Um, and as we know, there are problems with uh, free expression and, and, and media freedoms in Azerbaijan. Uh, so I would, I would urge in the run-up to that election, uh, so that there is no criticism about the fairness and freeness of the elections, uh, that restrictions on, on media and freedom of expression be, be eased, otherwise people will question. Also, it's my last question and uh, little remarks about your uh, position on Azerbaijan. For example, I'm interested in which, with which uh, organization, which with uh, persons do you work uh, on getting information about the situation in Azerbaijan? I, I work in Azerbaijan the same way I work in every country. Uh, first of all, I have colleagues in the Council of Europe, uh, in the monitoring mechanisms of the Parliamentary Assembly and the Court, uh, from which we get information about their contacts, information, assessment of the situation. <coughs> I use official information given by government authorities. My people follow the media very closely. My people are in touch with the full range of NGOs, but also foreign NGOs that are active in cooperating with Azerbaijan. So we try to get as full a picture of the situation as we can. Uh, and then when I go to a country, uh, based on the information we've gathered, I ask questions uh, of, of the ombudsman, of the ministers I meet, of the members of the presidential administration, uh, uh, and of the NGOs to, find, to make sure that we got it right. And thus far, I have not been criticized for for having, spreading any misinformation, lies, or half-truths about Azerbaijan. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, I want to underline one moment about uh, your reaction. For example, when uh, someone from journalists, from NGO activists, uh, uh, has been arrested in Azerbaijan, you uh, personally, your office uh, reacts uh, immediately. For example, from a uh, web page, from Facebook status, uh, it's good. It's and, uh, we appreciate it. But what about the human rights, uh, for example, one million Azerbaijan refugees? What about the people who were captured and uh, kept in Nagorno Karabakh? In spite of that, uh, human rights organization, journalists, they spread a lot of information. For example, me, I have uh, made uh, several uh, actions in front of uh, Parliament Assembly in Strasbourg. But would we, we don't see enough reaction from European institution, from your office about that, uh, this, for example, uh, I, I will uh, talk uh, concretely about Kalbecha hostage, uh, I mean, Dirgan Askarov and Shabbat Zulev, and we don't see enough reaction from you, from your office, and that's why uh, your office, your activity uh, doesn't accept it. Uh, completely in Azerbaijan, because in Azerbaijan they think that uh, Mr. Nuznik is busy only with uh, some group of journalists, some group of activists. Uh, they don't care about, uh, I don't know, Azerbaijan hostage, they don't know, care about the Nagorno Karabakh. And uh, what, what do you think about it? Well, Nagorno Karabakh is, is, is a bit beyond my mandate to address the issue of Nagorno Karabakh. There is a political process underway, and I'm not part of that process. Uh, with regard to the hostages uh, and, and, and the captains on both sides, I already said, I be, behind the scenes I've been addressed by both sides to engage on this issue. I, I, I urge them to observe the principles of, of, of the case law of the court, but also to work with the ICRC. With regard to IDPs, this is a legitimate human rights concern, and there are serious human rights issues to be addressed here. Uh, but I, it doesn't help the cause of IDPs to put independent journalists and human rights defenders in jail. Uh, and I would love to be able to address this issue, but 
as I said, media freedom for Tulin is freedom of expression is foundation. If you do not have media freedom, you cannot have free elections, you cannot have freedom, freedom of assembly, you cannot have freedom of association. So while these issues remain so urgent, it's very difficult for me to address other issues uh, of human rights. Uh, I would love to work not only on IDPs, but on issues of like gender equality and children's rights. But while human rights defenders, journalists, bloggers uh, are, are being detained and imprisoned and charged to give a long prison sentences, it's very difficult for me to justify working on other issues. That's true. Also, last question about your future visit. Have you uh, in your agenda to visit Azerbaijan in a few months? I, I don't have any immediate plans to visit Azerbaijan, but I will continue to assess the situation and developments, and if I feel that my visit can have an added value, uh, I, will, I will go. Um, I have 47 countries I must tend to, uh, and uh, I've been to Azerbaijan three times already. I haven't been to the number of countries I haven't been to once. So I must go to, uh, go to all, all the countries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.